Hey everybody, so we talked a little bit about electromagnetic induction and one of the ways in which we use electromagnetic induction is with windmills. But in order to really understand how windmills work, we're going to go through a couple of demonstrations to kind of give you a better idea as to how the blades work and maybe get into a little bit as to why they're shaped the way that they are. So I'm going to need my assistant to come over and help out a little bit. Okay. So now you can follow along in the camera if you want, in the video, or if you want, you can get some of these supplies yourself and do it at home. That's perfectly fine too. But so for the first one, all I did was I took a piece of paper and I cut a long strip along in half by length, inches, and maybe an inch along the side. So what we're gonna do is the following. We're gonna take the paper, I'm gonna hold it on the edge like this, and we're gonna put it here, right kind of on our chin. Now, our lip's gonna be above it, and the goal is we're gonna blow straight across. So are you ready, Jonathan? Mm-hmm. All right, so let's blow. All right, buddy, what did you observe happening? It, it went, it flew up and down. Yeah, so, so really quickly. Yeah, so the paper, it was kind of flipping around, but it was down here, and when I started to blow across, The paper lifted up. All right, so that's our first demonstration. So the second one we're gonna do is we're gonna take two pieces of paper like this, and I'm gonna hold them so that they're kind of together like this in front of me. I'm gonna bring them to my face. Now, I'm not gonna have it touch or bring it back to my cheeks or anything like that. I'm gonna hold the papers in front of me so it kind of looks like this. So you can see about how far I'm holding them up. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna blow in between the two pieces of paper. You ready? Let's blow. What happened, bud? They, they turned from, from this shape into a V shape. Oh. Like this. Okay, they kind of turned into V. I can see that, but basically, to make a V, they had to come together. Now, you can try this at home so you know that we're not actually you know, moving them with our fingers, but they came together in a V. The papers came together. So in the first case, I blew across the top and the paper lifted up. In the second case, I blew in the middle and the papers came together. So I want you to pause the tape, think for a second. What's our model? What's, what's explaining our observations here? So pause it, write it down. Okay, so now that you have a model, what we've seen is that whenever the air was moving, it seemed that the paper was kind of attracted to it, or there was something pushing the paper towards the moving air. Well, that's dealing with something what we call pressure. When air is moving, it creates an area of what's called the low pressure. So when you have high pressure and low pressure, high is like a force, pressure is a force over a certain area that's gonna cause there to be a force exerted. So when I blow across the top, low pressure on top due to the moving air, high pressure on the bottom, that raises the paper up. Now we're gonna do one more experiment, okay? Did you like red or do you want the blue? Red. Okay, so we're gonna do a testing experiment. So if moving air creates a low pressure system, what we're gonna do is the following. With a bendable straw, and I like using the bendable straws, and you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna put the ping pong ball on top of the straw, and I'm gonna blow through the straw. If our model is correct, what should we see happening to the ping pong ball? So I want you to pause the tape, think about it, and then we're gonna come back and actually do the experiment. And if you want, find the supplies. If you got them around, you can go ahead and do it. So just wait, don't do it yet, but pause it, and we're gonna come back. Okay, no, don't do it yet. So hopefully you have your model where you're you, you have your explanation, your, what's going to happen based upon our testing experiment. So go ahead and try it out. Whoop. So if our model is correct, the moving air should create a low pressure, which is going to balance the ball to kind of hover in the air. And our big ball went on the floor. That's okay. Well, you know what? Thank you very much for your help, why don't you? I appreciate the help. Now, I'm gonna show you something else. You can do competitions with this with your students. So for example, um, one competition, since students like to be competitive, is you're gonna see like who can keep the ball up in the air the longest. Now you do want to be in terms of safety. 
you want to make sure that uh, you don't have any students who have shortness of breath or any type of conditions like that because you don't want them to run into any problems that way. So that's one way that you can have a competition. Like me. Yes, like you, exactly. So the second <laughs> way that you can kind of run a competition is by doing the fall. So instead of, well, a third way actually, so a second way is to see how high you can get the ball without holding it. So, so you can time it to see how long you can keep it up. You can measure to see how high it goes up. And here's a third way you can kind of have a little bit of a competition and fun with your students. Because remember, we want them to remember and have fun with it. I'm going to take the ping pong ball and the straw this time, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it. What do you think should happen? Yeah. So you can also turn it and see who can actually get the biggest angle by how much it's turning. So I hope you like the demonstrations we did today. I hope it kind of helps you understand pressure. Thank you very much for your time and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.